Well, Prince Harry and Meghan have made headlines across the globe this morning by claiming they were chased by aggressive photographers in New York. But a taxi driver and the mayor of New York have weighed in, offering slightly different versions of the events and disputing claims it was a near catastrophic event. Oh, I don't think that's true. <laughs> I think that's all, you know, exaggerated and stuff like that. So don't read too much into that. You know. As far as you were concerned, when they were in your taxi, you know, did you feel like you were in danger? No, they no, were in no. Danger? It's New York City is the safest place to be. I would find it hard to believe that there was a two-hour high-speed chase. That would be, I find it hard to believe, but we will find out the exact duration of it. <laughs> oh, to cut through all the Royals' BS, uh, Royal Editor at the Daily Mirror, Russell Myers, joins us now. Rusty, lay it on the line. I mean, what is doing here? I can't get a take on it. <laughs> well, you know me, Carl. I'm uh, not one to sit on the fence with these things. So let's try and break it down for you. I mean, the, the first we heard of this was a statement from the Duke and Duchess of Sussex spokesperson saying there was a relentless pursuit. They were chased through the streets of New York. Meghan had been awarded an honour in the city just a couple of hours before. They left in their own car and then they were pursued by half a dozen or even up to a dozen cars, bicycles, SUVs, call it what you will, paparazzi chasing them. Now, the footage you're seeing now is of that alleged pursuit. Uh, no doubt there was photographs being taken, Harry and Meghan really in the back of the cab, fast, apparently... Though. Well, the, the, the issue is that they were being pursued at some stage. Mm. Now, I think that we've heard from the taxi driver. He says he didn't feel in danger. The, uh, the mayor of the city says that they have to sort of uh, speak to the officers involved to see how serious it was. Uh, I mean, listen, Harry has uh, spoken previously saying that he doesn't like the flash of cameras. He doesn't like the press following him. Mm. But this might be a bit of sledgehammer to crack a nut situation. But I think once we hear from the police and uh, trying to sort out actually what did happen, mm. maybe we'll get a bit more clarity. Look, anyone who goes in a, in a yellow taxi in New York takes their life into their own hands. <laughs> but what were they doing in a yellow cab? Where was their security? And why was he filming the whole thing unless it's for his doco? Yeah. Well, I mean, that could be another thing entirely. But, I mean, let's let's bring it back a second, because they had left the event with their personal security and they'd mm. said that they weren't comfortable with where they were going. They were due to go to a friend's apartment. They didn't want to show up there. So they went to a police station. They tried to give the, uh, the snappers the slip, got into a yellow cab. I mean, the, uh, the, the, the reason for that, we still don't know. I mean, it doesn't seem to be too sensible to be getting in a yellow cab at that stage. <laughs> and now we have, uh, we have them, you know, the police coming out and saying that there were no injuries, there was no arrests, there was no altercations. So, I mean, I've, it's probably a bit of six of one, half a dozen yeah. the other, if we're being kind. <laughs> we'll, we'll err on the side of kindness this morning, Rusty. Love your work. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Hey Carl, well, the mayor of New York has condemned the paparazzi pursuit of Harry and Meghan overnight as reckless and irresponsible, but he's stopped short of the dramatic description given by the Duke and Duchess. They allege they were chased by aggressive photographers after a charity event in what they claim was a near catastrophic pursuit. Let's bring in former protection officer to the Queen, Simon Morgan. Simon, thanks so much for your time. Now, a two-hour pursuit through New York City does seem a bit excessive. I mean, we've all been stuck in traffic jams there, right? What's your take on it? Yeah, good morning, Sarah. I think that's one of the um, inaccuracies when you first hear the report, you know, a two-hour car chase through New York. I mean, most of us would we'll surely be stuck in traffic for two hours going through New York and any other major city and I think the, the use of the use of the language the language initially was very emotive when we talk about catastrophic uh, car chases and we know um, certainly from the Duke's perspective what he means by catastrophic mm. because that's um, how his mother was killed in 1997 and he firmly blames the paparazzi for um, that and, her, and their relentless pursuit of her at that time. Do you think that's why, perhaps, I mean, particularly as you mentioned there, Prince Harry being so emotive about this, that's the first thing he would be thinking about, obviously, not wanting that same fate. He, he has in the past likened his wife to Princess Diana. Yes, he has, and that's been very well documented and, and the situation that developed last night. You know, yes, he's actually in that situation at the time and he's most probably thinking of the things that he said and then he's looking back um, to the death of his mother as well. So it's kind of quite a traumatic incident mm. kind of for him from their perspective. Um, you know, and certainly you look at it, and as with a lot of incidents, there's always two sides to every story and it is 
different people's frames of reference that actually kind of create that, that narrative. You've been in aggressive pap chases in the past, so you know this area quite well. I mean, obviously there were cars mounting curbs, driving down the wrong side of the road, so definitely there would have been elements of danger involved there. But what kind of security detail do you think the Duke and Duchess have that could have helped them in this situation? Yes, I mean, the paparazzi are very vociferous. You know, those, those photos that they take are worth a lot of money to them and they will pursue that. Um, to the nth degree. That's what they do. And, and you as a protection team are always looking to, to mitigate that. It's always going to be part of your risk register that the paparazzi are going to follow you and what are you going to do? What are mm. your contingencies around that? So no doubt their, their private protection team had something in place to kind of deal with that. And they've looked to law enforcement. They've gone to a place of safety. That has now come out that during that time frame they actually went to the 19th precinct and sought sanctuary in there and the support of of nypd this is where the um, they didn't envisage that that scenario was as catastrophic from a law enforcement perspective as it was for the sussexes so you've always got to plan for these things but you know the the paparazzi are very very vociferous around that they want the pictures and they will create a public safety issue so last last night changed from a security operation to a to a public safety one where people mm. are pursuing traffic um they are jumping red lights they are going on the pavements and that that is when i suspect nypd felt that they had yeah. to had to do something to support that private mm. team yeah absolutely it would have been very challenging indeed all right simon thanks so much for your insight appreciate it prince harry and wife megan have claimed they were involved in a near catastrophic car chase the couple is said to be upset and shaken after paparazzi pursued them for two hours. It took place after the couple attended an awards ceremony in New York, the incident drawing comparisons to the chase which led to the crash that killed Princess Diana. Let's go live to US correspondent Lauren Tomasi. Lauren, there appears to be different versions of this story emerging. Yeah, Carl, on one side of this you have a security detail for Prince Harry and Meghan saying this was chaotic and could have been fatal. Uh, on the other, a cab driver who picked up the Prince and Meghan uh, saying that he wouldn't call this a chase at all. Here's what we know. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle were in New York City for this awards ceremony. Uh, Meghan Markle received an award for her lifelong advocacy for women and girls. It was when the pair uh, left that function along with Meghan Markle's mother that we understand they were followed by six blacked out SUVs along with a number of scooters uh, and motorcycles, uh, who a spokesperson for them says were making a number of illegal manoeuvres, including running red lights, going the wrong way down the street, uh, driving on footpaths where there were, of course, pedestrians. They say that this car chase went on for some two hours. Now, the cab driver uh, who picked the Prince and Meghan Markle up during this was uh, asked, what does he have to say about the statement that this was a near catastrophic car chase? Oh, I don't think that's true. <laughs> I think that's all, you know, exaggerated and stuff like that. So don't read too much into that, yeah, you know. So, but as far as you were concerned, when they were in your taxi, you know, what, did you feel like you were in danger? No, no, in no. Danger? It's not. New York City is the safest place to be. I would find it hard to believe that there was a two-hour high-speed chase. That would be, I find it hard to believe, but we will find out the exact duration of it. That was New York City Mayor Eric Adams there. He did go on to acknowledge uh, the circumstances of Prince Harry's mother's death, Princess Diana. Uh, we know that Prince Harry, of course, holds a lot of anger about press intrusion. He uh, blames that for Princess Diana's death. Now, uh, New York City Police Department have confirmed they were assisting that security detail, but say there have been no reported collisions or industry, uh, injuries in this chase, Carl. Plenty more to come on that, yeah. Lauren, thank you. Welcome back. Well, Prince Harry, Meghan Markle and her mother are claiming they've been involved in a near catastrophic car chase with paparazzi in New York. The couple releasing a statement condemning the two-hour pursuit and accusing the press of threatening their safety. Joining us to discuss, independent MP Daly in the studio and editor of the Sunday Mail and Saturday Courier Mail, Anna Caldwell in Brisbane. Good morning to you both. Now, Di, they're making it sound like quite a serious incident. Others have said it wasn't quite that bad. Well, you can just see on the television screen uh, the kind of the court in a very obviously traffic jam street mm. there. Um, look, the puppets besides the paparazzi chasing the royal family, I mean, I don't know what's the whole interest in that. 
um, but obviously it, they're trying to kind of make it sound like what happened to his mother, mm. um, the late Princess Diana, then I, I don't think it's a comparison. Uh, but however, that said, I think, you know, the obsession uh, from, with the press, with, the, with uh, Prince uh, Harry and, and, and um, Meghan Markle, I just... I don't know. I you just, don't understand? I don't understand it. It's not an important <laughs> issue for me, you know. I know. I think it's a matter... They, they sort of court controversy wherever they go, right? Yeah. And, and this is the thing. I mean, Anna, they fled to the US allegedly to escape this kind of scrutiny, but ultimately they're in New York for a charity event. It's being publicised. I mean... <laughs> You'd, you'd have to be living under a rock to think this wasn't going to get covered by the paparazzi, right? Yeah, that's right. I mean, I think they've courted the attention. They've courted that obsession for some time. Even their decision to move to America really was a big... Um, you know, they wanted to be very dramatic about that. Uh, I think the public sympathy for Harry and Meghan is really... Um, you know, over the last couple of years has really started to uh, disappear, fall off a cliff. Um, you know, I, I do want to temper that by saying I do, I, I do have empathy for Harry. I think everything that he's been through through his life, you know, certainly, um, you know, the experience of losing his mother in this way. Mm. I have empathy for that, but I would really like some clarity on the facts. You know, anyone who knows New York knows that the idea of a two-hour high-speed chase is almost impossible. Um, yeah. uh, and there are obviously conflicting reports coming out this morning, so I'd like some clarity on on what occurred, um, you know, before we can really understand this. No, the, as you said, there's no way you can get in, involved in a high-speed pursuit on the streets of Manhattan, that's for sure. That's but right. curbing, curbing the, um, the pavement, driving the wrong way. That is dangerous. I guess it's probably a bit of a stretch, though, to compare it to the Princess Di situation, isn't it? Yes, I, I, it, it seems to be a stretch to me. As I said, I do have empathy for him. You know, mm. I, you know, none of us have been, or well, very few of us, I think, would have been in a similar situation to the life that Harry's led in terms of the way that he lost his mother. So I do have empathy for that. However, the idea yeah. seems like a big stretch. Hey there, Today fans. Sarah and... <laughs> What's my name again? Oh Carl. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching our YouTube <laughs> channel, though. Subscribe now for more news, special reports and amazing Aussie stories. And Carl misbehaving, Whoa, of course. That never happens. Always happens. What's she talking about?